I know from working with clients for over 13 years now that a high cholesterol diagnosis can be scary and quite frankly confusing. Your doctor's only advice might be to go on a statin, which might be the right choice for you, but learning more should always be part of the equation. You might wonder if cholesterol is a bad thing and why is it getting higher, especially if you feel like you haven't changed a whole lot in your diet or maybe you've even improved it. I'm not here to tell you what you should do. That's between you and your doctor. But if you stick around for the next few minutes, I'll teach you some things about cholesterol, how it works in the body, and how you can support yourself from the inside out, especially if you're concerned about your heart health. In fact, at the end of the video, you'll have an opportunity to sign up for my full Vitality Masterclass for Heart Health, which is a part of my Vitality Club, where I'll share with you more about what you can do when it comes to supporting your heart and the main triggers that contribute to poor cardiovascular function, the most potent nutrients found in your foods, and the best test to ask your doctor for, especially if your numbers are elevated and you're not sure why and you want to do more about it. And most importantly, we'll dive into the main three contributing factors when it comes to addressing heart health, which are inflammation, oxidative stress, and the role of the immune system and its impact on the cardiovascular system. You'll learn how these risk factors add up and what changes you can make, including some delicious heart healthy recipes that you'll love, handouts with more detail, and when you grab the masterclass, you can join this month's Vitality Community Q&A call and get your questions answered. But today, while I have you, let's dive into what cholesterol is, how it works in the body, the benefits and dangers of it, and three important steps you can take to address your own cholesterol levels. In case we haven't met yet, my name is Mary Sheila Ganella. I'm a board certified holistic nutritionist and Ayurvedic practitioner. In addition to my private practice, Occidental Nutrition, I'm the founder of the Vitality Club, a membership group of health-minded, amazing people who have joined to get support and guidance on what matters most, which is their health. You can learn more below about how to sign up for this heart healthy session or simply join the club for the year and put your health on the front burner. And today's topic on heart health is such an important topic because cardiovascular issues are the number one cause of death worldwide. The term heart disease refers to several types of heart conditions. And although it is sometimes thought of as a man's disease, almost as many women as men die each year from it in the United States. In fact, heart disease is the leading cause of death for women in the United States, being responsible for about one in every five female deaths. So let's get started by asking what is cholesterol and is it really that bad? Cholesterol is a waxy substance that is essential to our body's functions. It's really there to help us and not hurt us. It's a building block for all of our steroid hormones, including your adrenal hormones, your sex hormones, your entire endocrine system makes hormones, and these are all made from cholesterol. It's also the building blocks of vitamin D and our bile acids, which help us to digest fats and improve absorption of fat soluble vitamins, such as vitamin A, D, E, and K. Every single cell in your body has a cell membrane and cholesterol helps to make this membrane strong and fluid. And cholesterol is essential for the formation of the myelin in both the central and peripheral nervous system. The myelin is what insulates our nerves, aids nerve conductivity and cell signaling, and it's vital for immune function. And it responds to arterial lesions as a healing agent. So you can think of cholesterol as a patch. What is it responding to? What is it going to help the body to heal? Even plants contain small amounts of cholesterol and it's found in animal foods because it's vital to all life, just like it is to ours. Now, when you get your labs back, you'll see your total cholesterol, which adds up all the cholesterol types. You'll see HDL and LDL. These are high or low density lipoproteins. The lipoprotein is a soluble protein that is able to carry the fat through the bloodstream. That's its job. You can think of them like taxis. The HDL, which is a high density lipoprotein, carries cholesterol from cells and tissues back to the liver for disposal. The LDL, or the low density lipoproteins, carries cholesterol from the liver out to the cells and tissues. 
So the HDL carries the cholesterol back in and the LDL carries it out into the body. So one way to remember this is we think of the HDL as the heroes and the LDL as the losers. Get it? HDL heroes, LDL losers. And the reason LDL is the loser or the bad cholesterol is because it can become oxidized. Doesn't necessarily mean it's all oxidized, but it has more of that propensity, which can create arterial damage. And what is usually found on arterial plaque buildup. And this also shows a need for antioxidant protection. Your doctor might have also tested your VLDL, which is very low density lipoprotein. This is different than LDL, whereas LDL carries more cholesterol, the VLDL is what's carrying more triglycerides in your blood. And triglycerides are a storage form of fat. And this can be elevated, not just with the high fat diet, but maybe because you're eating too much sugar and carbs that's converting into fat. And this is, if it's not going to be used, if all that extra carbs getting turned into fat is not used uh, for fuel, it's going to be stored in the body and stored for later. <clears throat> Sorry, my dog is distracting me. <laughs> and this brings me to the next marker, which is triglycerides. Triglycerides are the main form of fat in the body and in the foods we eat. In the bloodstream, triglycerides constitute the major components of that VLDL. That's what they're shuttling around. And as I said, it's the VLDL that deliver triglycerides to the cells in our body. Since the main focus of my work with my clients over the years has been on blood sugar regulation, when I see elevations of triglycerides, this marker suggests insulin resistance and a fatty liver. And I know there are some dietary changes that can be made to lower this number, which will help not only with blood sugar balance, but also with cardiovascular health. And here's what, where I'd like to connect some dots. Any diagnosis of insulin resistance, prediabetes, or diabetes is a blood sugar issue, right? It starts with the cells not taking in the glucose, not responding to your own insulin production anymore. But this is all happening in our bloodstream. So it does affect the heart and the cardiovascular system because of where it's all taking place. In Ayurveda, when one system begins to affect the other system, we call that flooding. So these, what's happening is if the, if the sugar cannot get into the cells, it's going to build up in the blood. It's going to begin to thicken the blood. And that thicker blood, it's, it requires the heart to pump honey rather than water. And that becomes an issue that's going to put more pressure on the heart. That could raise our blood pressure. And then we might be making more cholesterol because higher blood pressure can be damaging to the arteries and veins and vessels. So it all is connected. So sugar is something I'm going to talk about a bunch in the master class, but is a really important piece about balancing our blood sugar. So it's in the liver that we make cholesterol. And let's just say that your body's very intelligent, so it's making that cholesterol for a reason. If it's suddenly high, why are you making more? For some people, high cholesterol could be because of genetics, and if you know this, then that can help you to choose your fats and oils more wisely. More about that in a moment. But let me get my first tip in when it comes to cholesterol. Even if you don't eat a lot of it, maybe if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, either way, your liver is still gonna make it, it's making it in response to what your body needs. That being said, just to get this out of the way, <laughs> it is okay to eat eggs. Do you know that the original studies that they did on eggs were with rabbits eating eggs? Which is strange because rabbits are vegetarians, so maybe their body was not used to eating high cholesterol foods. Because we know that oxidative stress is a key factor when it comes to cardiovascular health, Let's talk about the fats that we eat because fats have the ability to oxidize. Think about an avocado when you cut it and open it up. It will start to turn brown. It starts to oxidize. The same thing happens in the pan when we cook with our fats. So a general rule to make sure that our fats coming in are full of antioxidants and they're not harming the body, but they're protecting it so that when they're traveling through our bloodstream, they're not oxidized, right? causing a problem as much as you can. And I'm not a raw foodist, but try to have your fats more on the raw side whenever you can. 
So that means water saute. When you go to cook some food, add, uh, you, you turn on your heat, add your veggies, deglaze it with water or white wine or broth. Add your and save your oils for the end. Obviously, we're not going to eat all of our meats raw, but animal fats can hold up to higher heat. So fats are sensitive. If you eat nuts and seeds, eat them raw. Favor whole food, fat, whole food fats rather than cooked fats and oils. And this will support you in taking in good antioxidant-rich fats into your body that are protective to the cardiovascular system rather than creating more stress and more need for antioxidants to kind of calm down whatever those fats are. So obviously there's a big difference between fried foods and raw foods. Fried or even roasted in whatever kind of oil, nuts and seeds to raw nuts and seeds. The oils are raw and they're gonna be easier for the body to break down. The second heart healthy tip I'd like to share is to consume probiotics on a regular basis. Lactobacillus and bifidobacteria species have been shown to reduce triglycerides, LDL, and total cholesterol and raise our heroes, our HDL. They do this by preventing excess absorption of fats from our foods and increasing the excretion through the bowels. So you can support your flora through naturally fermented foods and prebiotic foods, which are the fibers that we can't break down but our bacteria can. Especially good prebiotic foods include jicama, sunchokes, all the allium and onions and garlic. And if you don't like ferments, you can try taking a probiotic. And the third tip I'd like to share, and there are a lot of them that I had to choose from, so I picked this one, is increase your intake of B vitamins. B vitamins are found naturally in animal proteins, even organ meats, green leafy vegetables, nuts and seeds, beans and grains, and they're literally is the closer you eat to the earth and the more whole your food is, the more bees you're gonna get. Bees are, es are essential to helping you break down homocysteine, which is an amino acid that can build up in the blood and cause high cholesterol. I'll be talking more about this in the masterclass. Bees are essential for helping us to break down our um, sugars and utilize them so we keep our blood sugar down. And they're, they're gonna help us with energy production and all kinds of things. So. Bees are essential, and that is where a whole foods diet is so critical for healthy blood sugar and cardiovascular balance. In the masterclass, I'll go into more detail of what functional nutrition considers the root causes of heart disease. And this is again, inflammation, oxidative stress, and the role of the immune system. We'll look at it from the angles of food intake, toxic exposure, underlying infections, stress, and lifestyle factors. You'll learn more about the heart and the emotions connected to the heart, as this is also an overlooked factor when it comes to caring for our heart. I'll give you some key nutrients and foods that can be a delicious game changer to your everyday diet. And by learning all these new things, you'll be empowered to take action with your food and lifestyle choices, and to even ask your doctor to be more empowered to know what else you can do besides just a statin. So I invite you to join the masterclass, learn more, and let's dive into this topic and really own your healthcare. Thank you so much. I hope you can join me. Thanks for joining me for this video. I hope you can take some action with what I taught you. Have a great day. Add any comments or questions below. I'd love to hear from you and I hope to see you in the masterclass.